Hey, this is Wileen Benson, and you are on the Daily Gratitude Call, where we start every day in gratitude. Gratitude is the highest energy state that we can be in. It creates a frequency of positive vibration that attracts positive experiences into our lives. Welcome everybody. This is Wileen Benson. This is our daily gratitude call. Thank you for joining our call today. I'm excited for what we get to learn as we do our private silent meditation. I'm going to set a timer for 90 seconds. We're going to do a private silent meditation on gratitude for unseen power, gratitude for unseen power. And we'll see what, uh, what we get to discover here. Um, So just write down whatever personal inspiration comes to you during this 90 seconds of private silent meditation on gratitude for unseen power. Begin. All right. Um, I'm still writing. (laughs) Okay. The um, power to manifest was the first thought that came to me. And um, it's, uh, there's a scripture, I don't know where it is, but there's a scripture that talks about the power to manifest is the power of godliness. And, um, you know, God is the ultimate creator, is the the great creator of the earth and the heavens and, you know, everything that there is. And if we are engaging that power to manifest, we are, it's a form of godliness. Um, We have to be in a really high vibration to be able to tap into that power of godliness. Um, Gratitude is one of those states of being that is one of the best states of being to be in to get yourself into a high vibration. And there are a lot of different things, you know, love, um, whatever. I mean, there's a lot of different, um, really good things that we could be focused on that put us into that high vibration. You know, we invite that state of being, um, and anything that doesn't resonate with godliness um, would diminish our power to manifest. That was, uh, the thought that came to me. And there are laws of physics that are unchangeable in my book, the seven gateways I talk about in this chapter, right before it's just a small, like two or three page, um, section right before the gateway of equity, which is the final gateway. I talk about what, um, what I term immovable momentum. And what that means is that there are physical laws that are immovable, that, um, you know, like laws of like gravity that are immovable. And if we are going to benefit from utilizing and uh, working in tandem with these laws of physics, then we are the ones who have to change. We're the ones who have to align ourselves with the laws of physics to be able to be godly 
and um, embrace this power of godliness, this power to manifest. Melissa. Uh, yeah, I was thinking a lot of the same things that you just said. And um, initially, my first thought that came to my mind was um, a line from a hymn. I can't remember which one, but it says, may my unseen wounds be healed. Mm. And you've been talking a lot about healing lately. And it goes along with, you know, the power of godliness that, you know, only God can heal our hearts. And I just was thinking about how much we go through hard trials and experiences and heartache. And it's just such an amazing opportunity to come to God and be healed by him. And we can't experience that healing if we don't experience all the negative. And it just makes it so worth it. And we can't know that unless we're at that high vibration that you were talking about because if you're in despair and you're in a low vibration you don't feel the high vibration you and like and I don't really know the exact way to get to the high vibration it kind of feels like it just happens I'm sure um, I think it was Colleen was talking about that there's laws like I'm sure there's like some sort of formula to get to the high vibration I don't know what it is but when you do make it there, it's just incredible. And you would like do it all over again, just for that high vibration feeling. Beautiful. Thank you. Yes. I have been, um, talking and thinking about this, um, healing, um, and, uh, specifically my masterclass this month, um, next Wednesday is going to be the 17th of February is going to be, um, on specifically that it's, uh, called reviving hearts. And I felt that in some ways people's hearts have been failing them in, um, you know, feeling that despair and panic and, you know, of all the things that are going on in our world today. And, um, when, you know, just like when I had a heart attack, um, nine years ago, they needed to revive my heart and, uh, Christ and God are the source of all healing, but we do have the power to revive our hearts. We can move ourselves out of despair into a higher vibration so that we can connect with God and tap into that power of godliness, that power of manifesting a whole heart or a whole soul or a whole relationship or a whole um, financial um, uh, circumstance, you know, whatever it is that Christ is the, he is the one that we look to for healing. He is the physician. Um, but we can turn around and face him. And I feel like that is really the first step to that process to, to get to him. And then whatever it takes to raise our vibration so that we can be in that power of godliness, that power of manifestation, and we're going to be, that's what we're going to be doing in our masterclass on the 17th. So I will be posting that link, by the way, today. So look forward to in having you all come. Thanks, Melissa. Colleen. I, I've been thinking about sacrifice and effort for a couple of days now and how sacrifice and effort lead to connections with God. If, if it's sacrifice and effort in that that realm and there are specific things that he's commanded our generation to do like family history work and just connecting the hearts of the children to the fathers and how i've used it as an excuse i used to be a family history worker at the family history center and how i've said well i'm not doing it on my phone i'm not i don't have a computer at home and i love the connection that i get with being at the Family History Center and they closed it, you know? So I've used that excuse this whole pandemic to not even get on family history sites. But I, I heard this story about these three young men in Africa that walked over 300 miles for two weeks to get to a conference center that they heard about. They didn't even have an organized church in their area and they just wanted to know more and the floodgates were open to them just they they went home with so much many pamphlets and 
to share with their village and this, the sacrifice that you're willing to make and not compromise and not make excuses, but to really connect and do what is commanded of you is, is so, there's certain laws of engagement. If you want a deeper connection with God, you do the things that, that, that create that. You follow his commandments, you obey, you don't make an excuse. God's not going to keep me out of heaven if I drink some coffee today because I'm extremely tired and I have to focus or whatever. There are sacrifices that you make just simply because you want a higher law. You want more than less. You want, you want to, to take that extra step of sacrificing time and effort. Even in this call, I noticed when I really want a deeper connection with God, I spend time before the call to connect. And then I don't do things like I did today, making bread and putting it <laughs> on the pans. I, I focus, you know? Awesome. So I think I just love the idea of sacrifice and the blessings that come from great effort. Beautiful. And I love the way that you are describing sacrifice. A lot of times when we think about sacrifice, it's like, you know, you're going into the depths of survival, you know, if you're <laughs> sacrificing something, but what, what I feel you saying is sacrifice, whatever, you know, be willing to step into whatever effort it takes, sacrifice your comfort or whatever to be able to connect. And it's connecting with people um, connecting with God in whatever, you know, way that you can and in, you know, a full connection sacrifice, you know, the time that it takes to actually give your full attention. Um, I like that. I think connecting, you know, Melissa was like, I don't know what the process is, you know, to get to that point, but, um, I think connecting is really, um, a big part of that, whether that's the only part or whatever, um, I think the and spiritual connection and, and even the physical connection with people. Effort and sacrifice seem to be the main point for me today. And I remember reading NCL Bush. I can't remember what, um, um, seeking the living God maybe is what it was. Um, Yearning for the living God. Yeah. Or, yes. And um, the, the sacrifice that those saints made to just meet together and to draw on each other's strength they seen angels and they said people in salt lake haven't seen angels i've heard and how could that be and it is because they were so willing to connect they were so mm -hmm. willing and just grasping for that connection awesome thank you and i can see that you know that's uh really helping you to be able to put that effort in to connect is what your message is today. Um, I, I do want to re reiterate, you know, that the sacrifice is what takes you to the connection, which is the peace. The connection is the key. So whether that means sacrificing or if it means, you know, something completely different for someone else, but for you, Colleen, I can really feel that that's, that's the lesson that you get to learn today. Thank you. Um, Tyree and then Crystal. I, my feelings feel raw, so I hope I can share. Uh, I, in my, I don't know if this even relates outside of my head, but I, what I thought about is the parable of the talents and what I thought was, am I, Am I the one that has five talents, but I'm afraid to lose them? So I, I hide in learning more and more because I don't feel, because I let myself stay in a place of feeling unworthy to share that I don't know enough or, you know, all those things. And my scripture yesterday for my GPS was, uh, the, so it was Dr. Covenants 109.7 and it talks about praising and singing Hosanna to the Lord and I was on the sub note of Ezra 3 
11, which also talks about singing together by course and praising and giving things unto the Lord. And I thought that that meant that I will, that in all I teach and all I will into existence, I love and praise my Savior, Jesus Christ. And, but then after you replied to what I wrote yesterday in a, in a text, I thought maybe it's that I need to do it now and stop waiting for later. And so anyway, that's what I was thinking about awesome. the unseen awesome. power of moving me to that point. Thank you. And um, there is definitely a connection there. Faith is an unseen power and trust is an unseen power. And you actually do have to not only step up to the edge, you have to leap from the edge. You have to take a step beyond what you know for that faith to actually manifest into a form of godliness where it becomes something tangible that you can hold on to, some evidence that you can hold on to. Faith is um, powerful when you don't see. And, in, and if you're, you know, like you said, if you're hiding behind not seeing and just, well, I'm still in faith, you know, I'm still trusting. I'm still having faith that it's, you know, that I'm enough, but I just got to learn a little bit more <laughs> Then, um, you know, you know, when you've crossed the line into just holding back and hiding. And at some point there has to be a step forward into the dark with, by yourself and just being able to look up to God for guidance instead of looking to people. Thank you. Thanks, Tyree. Crystal. So my thought is kind of about Joan of Arc. You know, she had unseen power, just like we can have. And when she was 13, she saw this vision of Michael and the angel, Archangel Michael. And it was so beautiful, the angel she saw. And they told her, you need to help France remain free and she cried when the angels left. They were so beautiful to her. And then she said, um, she went, when she was 16, she went and said, I need an escort to take me to the king. And they said, um, they said, no way, you, you, this little girl, you know, you're 16, heck no. And then the next January, she said, she went again and she said to these two soldiers she said i must be at the king's side there will be no help for the kingdom if not for me although i would rather have remained spinning wool at my mother's side yet i must go and i must do this thing for my lord wills that i do so and so she the way that she they said well, okay we'll take you to the king and she had a revelation of what would happen in the war mm -hmm. and it came true and so she didn't just we don't, she wasn't just Joan of Arc, like I'm brave. I'm 13. And she died by the time she was 19 killed at the stake, you know, but she had revelation and I bet she had angels helping her. And even when she was being burned to death, someone held up a crucifix for her to focus on as she suffered. And so she was able to do her work, keep France safe, which made it so that America, when we fought the revolutionary war, then America finally Benjamin Franklin got France to come at the very end and when England saw the Navy they're like okay forget it we're out America can be free and then the gospel was able to come forth and we have freedom of religion freedom of speech which has blessed the entire world because other people in other countries have got democracies because this partially because this one girl did her mission and another person did their mission and they have unseen power helping them, just like we will have unseen power to help us with our missions. Beautiful. Wow. So powerful, Crystal. Thank you. I just, um, as you mentioned, Joan of Arc, I was thinking about other significant um, historical figures, and they had that unseen power. They had the vision. None of the rest of anybody had seen the vision. They were the ones who it was unseen to them. They had the power within them because they saw the vision. And I really resonate with her words. I've never seen that 
quote that you read, if you would post that in the breakthrough with gratitude, Facebook group, that would be, I would love to, um, print that out and um, put that on my vision board because I feel that it's like, no, people cannot be saved without me that. And I hope all of you can get to the point. If you're not already, I hope you all can get to that point where you see that power within you and you have that vision. Nobody else will be able to see it because the vision is opened up to only you, but they can feel it in your words as you proclaim that. Thanks, Crystal. Um, Kathy, and then we will move to our permission process. Oh, I've been really impressed with a lot of the thoughts that have come out of this gratitude for uh, unseen power. And um, it started me on a track when you said a scripture about the power and manifestation godliness. And so I was like, I need to find that scripture because <laughs> I have been really confused about the word manifest and so many people using, you know, I, I have a friend that was just like, it's loosely telling me, used. It's very loosely used. Yeah. Well, and so in, in my searching through the scriptures and looking for the connection between power, godliness, manifest, every scripture, everything that I came up with was using manifest in a whole different phrase than I've heard used in the world recently. And it was manifesting by the gift of the Holy ghost manifesting, mm -hmm godliness and 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 manifest was like testimony it wasn't used i couldn't find it anywhere where it was manifesting things in our lives by manipulating mm -hmm. energy and mm -hmm. i had a friend that cautioned me against that so i was really intrigued to go looking for that and there were a lot of things that came up and one of the things was about how women um manifesting through just just how their gifts were brought out um, to heal. Um, I'll have to do more studies into that because that was just really interesting. And, and to me, there, but I really loved how you talked about how so many powers, um, how, how so many gifts are powers, and mm -hmm. we only have those through gifts of the spirit and godliness and, and how, why, um, sorry, <laughs> how Colleen talked so much about um, it's, this is a, a call that I'm just going to have to listen to over again. Yeah, that's that's awesome. mainly what I'm saying. Thank you. And I really appreciate you sharing about uh, the way that we use the word manifest. Now it's kind of been uh, as a lot of the words in the English language have been changed over time, you know, just to ma and manipulated to serve our own purposes, but this power of godliness, this power to manifest is, is a gift of the spirit. And when we think about, you know, how we use our creative power, our power to create our power of godliness, because we all have this, you know, the law of attraction, we can speak things into, into existence and not into existence, but we can bring things to us based on, you know, the words that we speak, they already exist, but, um, to loosely use those creative gifts. I don't think that um, our heavenly father gave us these gifts to, um, you know, that we were born with these gifts to, um, to use them for our own benefit. I, I do believe that um, to use these gifts in their proffer, the way that they were meant to be used, we do need to bring the Holy spirit into it. We need to connect with God and ask, what would you have me create? What would you have me, you know, what goal, what is the one most important thing that I can do today to help fulfill your purpose? And these are things that are, you know, that we teach that, that are just like second nature to us on the Lord's way to wealth and in the architecture of life. But it's something that needs to be relearned um, in the world, because there's so much looseness that's happened. Um, instead of a power, you know, of, of seeing this as a power of godliness. And if we are, if it is a power of godliness, then, um, and if we're, we're using this power for our own benefit, then we're setting ourselves up as, you know, a, a, a God, instead of looking to God for, um, for that power, we're embracing it as our own. And that's, I know that that's not something that 
it was meant to be used for in, in the way that it was meant to be used. Kathy, did you want to add something? Just well said. Um, I would just encourage everybody to do your own study in topical guides and, and searching the, that, that godliness and power of manifestation and um, the, the manifest, just building the testimony of and giving the glory to God. I think that's a huge point as well. Yeah, I think that uh, um, it, it's you see it more often as something is manifest rather than manifesting. And um, that even just that little shift right there can give you a different feeling about it. So thanks, everybody. Let's go ahead and take a deep breath. And as we are stepping into our permission process, this is a place where we do connect with God and we invite inspiration of next steps and what is uh, the best thing for us to be working on right now. Um, something that is, um, that would, that God would be um, so in support of. And so this is a perfect place for us to step into that space of that, of um, embracing that power of godliness, connecting to him and knowing what it is that we um, get to create with him. And so go ahead and take another deep breath and allow yourself to uh, be in that God space, um, taking this high vibration uh, energy that we've created in this uh, gratitude that has been expressed and new understanding, um, inviting light and love into the space, um, the vision of the power that we have within ourselves not only the power to manifest, but the power to save as Joan of Arc, as Crystal was talking about Joan of Arc, the power to save, power to serve in a much higher way, serve our people, serve our nation, serve the world. And we do have that power. And when we connect with God, we can understand more fully um, what that entails and what our part is. Go ahead and take one more deep breath. And um, just be open to know what is the one, what is your part in helping God to fulfill his purpose to save the world and bring his children home? What's your part? And just receive it, listen to it, be open to it. And also listen for any limiting beliefs that might be coming up because this is huge. Allow those limiting beliefs to be there. And also listening for the one most important thing that you could do maybe this week that would help you take one step towards fulfilling your purpose that would help God to fulfill his purpose, saving the world and bringing his children home. What's the most important thing that you could focus on this week? And then what is the one most important thing you could do today that would help you step fully into um, feeling confident in accomplishing this weekly goal? Maybe it's not even a step that helps you fulfill the goal, but helps you become the person that would be confident enough to move forward on it. So what's your inspired shortcut today to becoming the person who can fulfill this goal this week? And then looking at those limiting beliefs, and what is the cost of holding on to those limiting beliefs? You have your next step today. You have your goal for the week. And you know that there's a bigger purpose that will help God to fulfill his purpose. So what effect will these limiting beliefs have on you being able to complete that higher mission, that higher purpose? Will that be taking your action step today or taking or finishing your goal for the week 
or eventually helping God to fulfill his purpose. What effect will those limiting beliefs have? And if you can see that it's not going to serve you to hold on to that limiting belief, if you are very aware of the uh, cost of it now, and you want to let go of that, you can give yourself permission to do that by saying yes. 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 Awesome. So what are some new beliefs? What are some new beliefs that are going to take the place of those old limiting beliefs will allow you to step fully into this new energy, this new person that you know you need to become to be able to finish this goal this week and also to be um, have your purpose aligned with God so that he can fulfill his purpose through you. What are the new beliefs that are going to help you um, let go of that limiting belief and to step fully into fulfilling your purpose and therefore helping God fulfill his purpose. Two or three new beliefs to replace those old limiting beliefs, that old limiting belief, and then take deep breath and allow those new beliefs to fill you up and to give you that courage to be able to step forward on your inspired shortcut today and finishing your weekly goal. And in a moment, I'm going to invite you to come back to the present and we'll have time for maybe one quick share. And I would also like to invite anyone that is feeling like they need some extra support today um, to reach out to me by going to askwileen.com. That will take you to my calendar and you can schedule a 15 minute call, askwileen.com. And so go ahead and come back to the present and continue bringing your thoughts together, making them as concise as possible. And I encourage you to put those on your vision board as soon as the call's done. Um, is there someone who would like to share something about their experience today? Amelia, I... Um, just feel to ask you to share if you are willing, and if not, that's okay. Um, <laughs> can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Oh, I, I'm sorry. It's noisy. My kids all woke up early. <laughs> um, oh, gosh, I can't believe you said my name because I was thinking I should. I was just going to stay quiet and hope that somebody else would say something. <sighs> okay. Um, I guess the thing that came to my mind was... Um, you're not here. I don't Sorry. That's okay. Um, um, the thing that came to my mind when you were talking about the power to save and the power to serve was um, I had, I was doing T Tammy, one of Tammy's um, uh, meditations the other day, and it was about how God views us. And one of the things that, um, that I, I wrote down a whole list of things and, and, you know, it's not all of them were completely positive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, there, were, there were some negative things. I don't know if negative quite the right word, but you know, weaknesses and flaws that I have. And um, one of the things that, that was a strength for me was that I don't judge others. Mm -hmm. And I've never really thought of myself as not judging, you know, but I have, um, you know, in past experiences that I've had, I've, I've gotten to where I, I feel like I have so much, empathy and sympathy for other people's um, just their plights and situations. And because I've been through some things that just kind of opened my eyes, you know, not that I understand fully what other people are going through, but I have this um, um, just no judgment, you know, I, I can listen to them and I can under, you know, try to understand what they're going through without. And anyways, um, it was my, my limiting belief was that I judge myself and that, and that I lack confidence mm. and that I could serve others better, especially my family, but even my friends and things, if I could um, um, learn to be kinder just to myself and um, to build up my, my own confidence because I don't have very much of it. Beautiful. Thank you. I really appreciate you sharing, Amelia. I just want to mention that um, that power that you have of not being not judging is charity. And um, if you are judging yourself, then you're not having charity for yourself. 
and you are out of alignment because um, it's a commandment to have charity and you naturally have it. And so if you can just fully step into having that charity for yourself, I know that God can use you in huge ways because that is the pure love of Christ. It's like Christ still being on the earth if you're here. So I really encourage you to um, put your time and effort into um, finding that love and that charity for yourself. Thank you. And I would love to have a conversation with you. If you'd want to go to askwileen.com, um, that would be awesome. Thank you for sharing. And Tammy, um, if you want to share on the Breakthrough with Gratitude group, that particular uh, meditation that Amelia was talking about, and also uh, information on how to join those meditations, how to listen to those meditations that you do. I know those are really powerful. I've listened to some of them and they are, they're very powerful. So you have a, an amazing gift. I don't know anybody that can do what you do. I don't think anybody in the, on the earth can do what you do. So thank you for thank you. sharing your gift. Awesome. Well, love you guys. I would love to continue sharing, but we are at the end of our time. Um, I, uh, Kathy says, I totally and completely love and accept myself. My favorite phrase from EFT. So thanks for sharing that, Kathy. Um, we look forward to being back together tomorrow, uh, 7 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. In the meantime, please go to uh, the Breakthrough with Gratitude group. Share your thoughts there. And uh, Tammy's going to be sharing her meditation there. And I know lots of other um, wonderful thoughts are going to be shared that will continue this high vibration energy of gratitude, which is an unseen power. And just to encourage you to maintain that um, throughout the day. And then we'll be back together tomorrow at 7 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank love you, you guys. Thank you. Love Thank you. you. Have a great day. Hey, thanks so much for listening. And I encourage you to tune in every day to the Daily Gratitude Call. And the Daily Gratitude Call happens live every weekday morning. I'd love to have you join. So to find out how to join live, go to my website, wileenbenson.com. Thanks for tuning in.